Uh, Tara, I don't know how to tell you this. I think your t-shirt got damaged. It's called fashion. <laughs> I never liked the way t-shirts fit me. So what I've started to do is I just buy all my t-shirts like a size too big and then I cut them up. Okay. Because they're always like either too long or too short. So I just cut them to a length I like them. And then sometimes I just like cut the sleeves, but sometimes I beat them up a little bit. Perfection. So how was your trip? It was pretty good. Um, my little niece made First Communion, which uh, if you're not Catholic, First Communion happens in like second grade. And it's the first time you're allowed to have the little the little cardboard wafer and a sip of wine. And there's a big special mass and you wear all white for some reason. Um, Which I got to love. You're six or seven years old. And they put you in all white and then they hand you a thing of wine. Really? Come on. <laughs> like, should we get in like a plastic well, smock or something? It should be like a Gallagher show. Right. You know? <laughs> so we're in the and I I don't I don't really I don't really go to church outside of like family events anymore. So I I am not in good standing with the Catholic Church. So I cannot go up and get the little wafer and the sip of wine. I gotta stay in the pew because I'm a heathen. But anyway, so the priest has given his little sermon and he's talking to the kids about like why today is special and this, that, the other. And uh, I want to be clear that this is not like a Q&A. This is the priest talking. <laughs> yeah. But all of a sudden, a little tiny eight-year-old hand shoots up from the very front pew. <laughs> and my niece's name is Molly and the priest says, Molly. She says, do I have to drink the wine? <laughs> and my sister is just next to me like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, this child. Oh, my God. Uh, Molly didn't like the wine, so she didn't want to drink it. And she may wanted to make sure everybody knew that. And the priest was like, you don't you don't really have to drink the wine. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, video that our audience Go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little what we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? This, we've got, this is not the only vehicular mayhem story this week. We've got several of them this week. Oh dear. It's, it's like, you'd think that, 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 you know, a beta for GTA had dropped is, is, is what? All right, let's start with Florida, because of course we're starting with in Florida. Um, charges added for Key West man accused of stealing tractor driving to college campus to kill two people. Now, of course, he didn't succeed because we're talking about it. Because, you know, if he succeeded, this, this it would be a very different show tonight. Um, Key West man is now facing two additional counts of attempted murder after being accused of stealing a tractor from a golf course, driving at the College of Florida Keys. Ethan Robert Lane, 22, was initially charged with a single count of attempted murder following the May 4th incident. Faces four other felony charges and eight more felony charges are pending. According to Key West Police, Lane, a groundskeeper at the golf course, stole the tractor and drove it to the college with the intent of killing two people there. He drove the tractor through the lobby of the Lagoon Landings dormitory, then used the bucket attachment to destroy the overhead plumbing under the building. Lane then rammed a truck in the parking lot, overturning it. Another vehicle was occupied by a man and his four-year-old daughter. The victim saw the tractor veer towards his car, raised its front end, and smashed down on his car. The tractor backed away momentarily, and the victim was able to escape with his child. Police say Lane also aimed the tractor at a third vehicle, but the driver was able to avoid him. According to authorities, Lane then drove the tractor off campus onto College Road, 
Multiple people called 911 to report the chaos. Uh, the first officer on the scene encountered the tractor on College Road. Lane then am aimed the tractor directly at the police car and rammed it, lowering the bucket on the windshield several times. The officer then fired several rounds at his attacker. Lane was taken into custody a short time later. All right. The first I don't know many, how many times we have to tell you all that GTA is not a LARP. It is not. It really isn't. But first of all, let's start here. Why? Uh, I'm like, were you trying to kill specific people? Right. Did, did you have a list or some shit? Or just, I think I'm going to kill people with a tractor today. Like, of, you would think if you were actually, of all the implements, for, for a precision task, like, this person, I want to kill them. Why a tractor? Why a fucking tractor? I mean, access. But if you're the groundskeeper, you probably have, like, gardening shears. Right! You have sharp things, and blunt things, and electrical things. Why are you taking yeah. a tractor? Also, yeah, like, what the fuck did the four-year-old do to you? Slamming the down on, like, fucking up the guy's car with a four-year-old four in there. Look, the world fucking sucks, guys. Right. I don't know if you've noticed. The world fucking sucks. Mm. Four-year-olds should be allowed to love tractors. <laughs> yep. I don't think that's too high a bar to clear that four-year-olds should be able to think tractors are cool and not have to have nightmares about them. That's not asking too much. In terms of the goal of the exercise, this seems as though we're at zero for ten, I think. Yeah. Because... What what exactly did you accomplish here, fella? I mean, all you all you did was a fuckload of property damage. You're gonna get sued. You're gonna get sued. Um, yeah. Just in case Why? you didn't know this, just because you go to jail doesn't mean people can't sue your ass. Yeah. You, it's not like and oh, you got me on. The, I'm in jail. You can't sue me here. No, no, they can. Make a lot, yes, yes. Plumbing's the big money damage. Oh God, yes. Plumbing ain't cheap. Like there's there's a plumber in Key West who read this this newspaper and just they got excited in yeah. a carnal way. Yeah. I mean, I guess the good thing is for college kids, the school year is pretty close to over, so that dorm didn't have to be without plumbing with students in it. For long. It's bad enough having to share but the even, damn showers and shit. Right. Like, I don't know how many of y'all have lived in a college dorm, but the showers are disgusting. And there is, much like a junior high school, a specific smell. Uptown funk, yes. And uh, not having plumbing is not going to make that better. Just, because it, the college kids that actually do shower are now not able to. Like, this is like trying to make a grilled cheese sandwich with a baboon. What is going on? Like, what, how did you get from here to here? It's... Well, speaking of zoo animals, um... <sighs> My God. This, this is just... What did you think you were doing? What in the world... Um, this is coming to us from China. <laughs> I don't know how you thought this was going to work, but bless their hearts. Um, got to stretch this out. It's going to pop up. There you go. Um, dogs painted black and white at China Zoo to pass off as pandas. And you got to see, they look adorable. Look at them. They look adorable, but they don't look like pandas. They look enough like pandas that I want one. 
A zoo in China has come under fire after authorities painted two dogs black and white to resemble pandas. The Taizu Zoo in the uh, Jiangsu province. Uh, visitors were shocked to discover the animals they saw in the panda enclosure were chow chow dogs. Fake pandas unveiled, unveiled on May 1st had their manes trimmed before they were dyed to resemble little pandas. They put the painted dogs on display between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. regularly, and visitors flocked to see them. When tourists realized they were looking at chow chow dogs, there was widespread outrage. Now, here's, here's what absolutely I guarantee you this happened, all right? There was somebody there that was like, that's not a panda. And someone else in that audience is like, yes, it is. And here's how you can tell. This is this. This is like tr just fucking completely wrong, but wrong with confidence. You yeah. know that was going on. I feel like the giveaway would be when they had to bring out bowls of puppy chat. Yeah. Because pandas are herbivores. Like, does that, does, and dogs are not. Does that even <laughs> look at that? I, 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 I mean, I hope they use pet friendly dye. <laughs> I'm no zoo. Because there is pet friendly fur dye. I, I'm no zootician. But I don't think pandas wag their tails. No, they don't have that. I, I could be wrong. <laughs> and We're... also, though, like pandas are from China. Like the rest of the world has trouble getting pandas for right. zoos because, you know, you have to be on good terms with China, mm. and not everybody is. But like pandas are from China. Well, we're kind of running out. You of them. probably would have had an easier time mm -hmm. wandering out into the wilderness and snagging a panda. This is not the first instance of an animal being passed off as another at a Chinese zoo. A similar incident occurred last year at the Hangzhou Zoo, where visitors said that a human was made to wear the costume of a bear. I don't think you understand how zoo work. That really fucks up the who would you rather run into in the woods question <laughs> now. Well, just ruin that one entirely. Like that just that just that just fucks up women. I mean, this is the poor puppies. I mean, the puppies are fine. Apparently it was pet safe die, but Natural dye can be used on dogs they're, if they have long fur, yeah. But still. Like, dog show people color their dog's fur. There are safe ways to do it. But, my God. But, come on. Yeah. Who thought this was a like, good plan? At some point, people were going to notice that the pandas were not getting bigger. <laughs> because a fully grown panda is considerably yeah. larger than any breed of dog you can think of. A little bit and bigger. yes, I include mastiffs. Pandas are big. big. Well, speaking all else of big, um, actually, these are not as big as they should be. Come to think of it. Not like that. Um, smugglers get really creative sometimes. This one, however, I'm, I'm like, wow, really? can't just you can't leave let people have the fucking transformers police bust find 700 pounds of drugs inside transformer statues so we ruined tractors for children now we're coming for optimus prime thailand authorities start made a startling discovery when they busted open life-size transformer robot statues and re retrieved over seven hundred pounds of ketamine now first i want to point out because i'm a giant nerd these are not life-sized because but can we talk about the fact that they had the transformers at the press conference they did they brought the transformers down to demonstrate they put them in they put the drugs in there like you're having your press conference to show off the the giant drug bust which which cop was it that was like, you know what we should do? <laughs> we should get Bumblebee's ass down here. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
guys, um, they retrieved 700 pounds of ketamine. That's almost a foot. That's a thousand. That's half a ton of ketamine. Yeah. Uh, Australian authorities found around 220 pounds of methamphetamine that an unidentified woman tried to smuggle inside a food processing machine on March 12th. Um, she allegedly tried to smuggle a bigger batch of drugs inside the bases of life-size, these are not life-size, statues of the Transformers characters Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Greenlight. Greenlight? Where did who the I fuck just, is Greenlight? Who the fuck is Greenlight? Like, I yeah, life size guys, that's, that's, Optimus Prime is a semi, he's a truck, he's, he's a fucking <laughs> truck. That's that's not they did. I watched The Mass Singer because it's just a fun, ridiculous, stupid show, and they did Transformers Week and they had the Transformers there and they were like a foot taller than Nick Cannon. <laughs> like Optimus Prime was like a foot taller than Nick Cannon. I'm like, Optimus Prime is a semi. Yes. <sighs> all right. Of all the things you could hide these in, aren't you supposed to pick something inconspicuous to hide the drugs like, in? Like at least pick Decepticons, fuck. <laughs> Get on theme. Get on theme. Yeah, but you're you can find Megatron. Like you're supposed to pick something that's not going to erase something that no one's going to pay any attention to. Something that no one's going to be. Yeah. But you get a transformer. Somebody on that crew on that that shipping is going to fuck with the transformer. It's a big toy. They're going to be look like, yeah. look at the, I am a law. I am allegedly a grown man. And I would look at that and be like, Oh, transformers. I would mess with the toy. Yeah. Why? How that's. And, oh, Hey, he's kind of surprised inside. You got to put it inside something. Nobody gives a fuck about right. like a shipment of Tesla's. <laughs> Or something. <laughs> something nobody wants. Tara, Tara, Tara. They aren't making enough to ship any of those anymore. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Anyway. Hi, Valkyrie. Uh, Do you want to come in and be on the internet? Or you just want to stare at me from the hallway? She just wants to stare at you in the hallway. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to uh, Volato Beach near St. Augustine, back to to Florida. This is an we, we've got our our uh, mug shot for this week. This this guy is it's a doozy here. Um, man arrested for joyriding around Volato Beach, crashing stolen one hundred thousand dollar boat in his underwear. It is a mug shot. Just that, look that right. Just <laughs> man's ill-fated attempt to make a joy, take a joy ride on a boat he didn't own, ended in a watery mess off the shores of Saint Augustine, prompting a flurry of activity on social media. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, Anthony Terry found himself in hot water after allegedly stealing a woman's one hundred thousand dollar boat near the Conk House Marina. The boat, now afloat but listing heavily. Became a viral sensation on Facebook, describing the scene when I will eyewitness shared. He approached my daughter and her boyfriend in his underwear with a boat bumper tied to his arm, wearing an ankle monitor. So there's a lot going on here. Yeah. Uh, is things have happened. I mean, it's Florida, so the guy was probably just like, I think it was my kid's school teacher. <laughs> A uh, wildlife officer reported that on Tuesday he stole the boat from a private dock. Terry's unusual attire and suspicious behavior raised eyebrows, <laughs> even in Florida somehow. Especially considering his prior record, he was reportedly on probation for, ooh, domestic battery. Come on. Further testimony from a concerned boater who wanted to remain anonymous paid a picture of Terry's sailing incapability. Incap it's very clear he had very little boating knowledge, the boater remarked. He struggled with basic knots. He didn't know whether to attach his anchor. Sir, I think you're what missing the, the gin point. and tonic. 
<laughs> like, can, can you, you're right there. You're good. There's a guy in his underwear with an ankle monitor stealing a boat. And fucking Thurston Howell the Third over here has his what? martini. He's like, my God, lovey. He doesn't even know whether to attach the anchor. <laughs> he said, that's not a slip knot. That's a sheep shank. <laughs> Joke's <laughs> on him. Meanwhile, the boat's owner remained unaware of the theft until contacted by local authorities. Now she faces $1,000 in repairs, finding herself grappling with the aftermath of Terry's actions. As the investigation unfolds, Terry's been charged with grand larceny, highlighting the serious consequences of impulsive joyride. What the fuck happened here? Do you know what the mugshot looks like? What? Did you ever have that toy when you were a kid that you got for like a dollar? Hmm that had like a bald guy and a bunch of magnet uh, like metal shavings and a magnet Wooly Willy supposed to like Wooly Willy Yeah you had to like put facial yeah. hair on him He does he doesn't like. he Oh now I want to see if I can get get the fuzz off his face and put it onto his head <laughs> No nah, it's not working it's not working What happened that we are missing so much of this story so much yeah yeah like this like you know with the ankle monitor on the whole point of that is that they can tell where you are they, they're going to find you the whole function of that is to find you like what were you thinking they can't drive out to a boat i mean i think the police have boats there are you sure I think so. I don't know. I don't think the police are legally allowed to have boats. I mean, they're not legally allowed to have a lot of shit, but they do. <laughs> yeah. I, maybe who's trying to flee to Cuba? <laughs> it, it, the, the look on his face is just like, well, was there any other outcome here, sir? Was there any other fucking outcome going to be? Also, like, if you're going to steal a boat and you know fuck all about sa sailing, maybe don't steal a sailboat. Right? Get a fucking, like a fucking motorboat or some shit. Yeah. I know fuck all about sailing. I'm not going to steal a boat that requires a knowledge of knots. Because you know the knots I know? The kind that I tie my shoes with. That's it. That's, yeah, that's to put the, the rabbit it's runs the around the tree. extent of my not knowledge. Yes, yeah. I was a Boy oh, Scout. I do the two rabbit ears. I was a Boy Scout. I ain't no shit about knots either. I'm very bad at this. Oh, oh crap. This next one. This is, this is from... Uh, Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach is a terrible place. The, the, I, I've never been. The, there's, if you are ever interested in a place where you could acquire um, a Hard Rock t-shirt, a, uh, a Ripley's Believe It or Not t-shirt, and all the Confederate memorabilia you could ever want, in one place, that's Myrtle Beach. It's cool. It's, yeah, it's 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 really not though. It's it's so not. But of course that this is Mar of course these fuckers came from Myrtle Beach. Passengers banned on flight. Passengers banned after flight on Spirit Airlines flight to Boston. A group of passengers who got in a fight on a Spirit Airlines flight that was en route to Boston are now banned. For life. Banned for life from Spirit Airlines. I know. That's a low. That's. That's. That's rethink your lifetime. <laughs> the fight happened. That's like getting banned from the bus. The fight happened on a flight from Myrtle Beach to Logan International Airport on Tuesday night. It was captured on cell phone video. Flight attendant is seen on video trying to break up the fight. Do not tolerate disruptive behavior of any kind, and the passengers involved are no longer welcome on any of our flights. <laughs> All I can think of, and stay out of the Woolworth! 
come on. Can you imagine being like people are such dicks on planes? They really are. Yes. And like there are so many annoying things people do on planes. Can you imagine a full on brawl breaking out on your plane? Because there's nowhere to go. Like I'm reminded of um, like uh, raising Arizona. Where that scene where uh, Nick Cage and John Goodman are trying to have the fight in the mobile home. <laughs> and it's because, like, he raises his hands up, scrapes his knuckles on the ceiling and all that crap. That's kind of must be what it's kind of like trying to have a fight on an airplane. Yeah. Where are you going to go? Don't exactly have a real range of motion there. And everywhere there is space, there is people. At no point at time, I can't imagine any of these people did not have the self-awareness to go, wait a minute, am I being a stereotype right now? <laughs> or even just like, am I the fucking worst right now? Right. Like you have managed to be worse than the asshole that takes off his shoes on the plane. And it, no, like you're going into this like, no, I'm the reasonable one. This is a good solution for this problem I'm having. Yeah, I should. I should follow through with this plan of action. I'm going to kick this guy in the nuts on the plane. And again, if we've said it once, we've said it a million times. You have no rights once you're on an airplane. Nope. They're little tube-shaped dictatorships run by people who have to wear polyester uniforms. Yeah, this is not good. Oh, and they're slap fighting, too. They're slap yes. fighting. That's It's not even a cool fight. It's not even a cool fight. I can't imagine getting banned for life for a slap fight and there's it's not like you can pretend like you know no we, we i punched him right there's video of it you dipshit <sighs> well finally this week we go uh fenway park boston boston so we actually complete the trip what the fuck Vehicle drives through Fenway Park gate, crashes into forklift. Drivers placed under arrest. Oh, we really did complete the trip because we, we started did. with a tractor crashing into shit. Yeah. Drivers placed under arrest Monday afternoon after she drove through a gate at Fenway Park and crashed into a forklift. A Red Sox spokesperson said the crash happened near 8.30 a.m., the car crashed into a forklift that had been removing staging from a weekend event. Forklift operator Eric Pulmuter, uh, Perlmuter, Perlmuter, Perl, Perl, Eric, said the driver turned into the ballpark's loading dock and headed for center field. I literally slammed the back of my forklift against her car and slammed her into the wall, said the driver hit reverse, was trying to get away. This is the... When a Boston police officer jumped on his forklift and told him to get her. Um, Sounds about Boston to me. I don't I don't think that's in the field guide. Whose cow are we gonna take? <laughs> As she put it into reverse, I slammed the forklift forward, like forward gear, and just hit her and went right into the bumper and picked her right up about three and a half feet. Boston police said the driver's taken hospital, not non life threatening injuries. In an update Monday afternoon, Massachusetts State Police said the driver is also believed to be involved in a series of other crashes around the city, including an incident at the U.S. Coast Guard station in North End and a hit and run at the incidents of uh, Ted Williams Tunnel. Driver allegedly hit two vehicles and fled the scene. There were no apparent injuries to hit and run. No further information is available. So I guess she doesn't have Smat Pack. <laughs> we're gonna get comments. remember that commercial yes okay comments what in the entire fuck 
I mean, I don't know if you've ever driven around Boston. I look forward to your comments. Driving in Boston is bullshit. <laughs> like driving in Manhattan is not easy because because mostly the people, but at least Manhattan is like set up as a grid. It's logical. Boston has the terrible fucking people, but also the streets were designed by a four year old on meth. <laughs> Wee. Nothing nothing makes any fucking sense. No. There's roundabouts for no reason, and everybody's mad. Driving in Boston is bullshit. These could legitimately just be accidents because of the way they designed the goddamn city. Or she woke up that morning and chose violence. Could be that too. Just... I mean, how are the Red Sox doing this season? <laughs> What were you trying to accomplish? Boston sport fans do not fuck around. <laughs> uh, you've already crashed your car into a bunch of other cars that day. Now you're topping it off with, I'm going to drive out into Fenway and do donuts on the field. <laughs> That'll be fun. I'm going to drive the bases. That'll be fun. Who's going to have a problem with that? That'll be fine. Be fine. And this is double I do think it's funny that the other crash was the Ted Williams tunnel. Like, Maybe you're the only Yankee fan in Boston. In which case you would be angry in general. But, but this person really seems to have animus against the Red Sox in particular. This is doubly weird for me because I've been playing Fallout 4 and that's set in Boston. And like the main the main settlement is Diamond City. They They build a city inside Fenway Park. So it's weird seeing this, and I'm like, huh, Raylu? Let's try that. <laughs> no, there are no cars in Fallout, unfortunately. There are, but they just explode and kill you. There's none you can actually drive. Hmm. It's it's stupid. I just... What happened? I do, I do absolutely love the image that the forklift guy was like, oh, fuck no, and then the cop was like, yeah! <laughs> Yeah, the cop was like, this so, is the appropriate choice of action right here. So perfectly Boston. They're lucky she had a front wheel drive car. Because if it had been rear wheel drive, shit would have gotten weird. I don't know enough about cars to know why. Well, okay, front wheel drive. The, the drive, the, the force comes from the front of the car. The front of the wheels are engaged. Real wheel drive, it's the rear wheels are what drive the car. All wheel drive is all four wheels. So obviously she only had front wheel drive because once they got the front off the ground, there's no more traction. The drive, the car's not going no more. If she'd, oh, had, okay. if she'd had rear wheel drive, she could have just kept right on going and taken the forklift with them. With the wheels up in the air, just drive, going back with the forklift hooked on. That could have just been fun. <laughs> just, god damn. You got to get that snap pack. <laughs> so, uh, so, what have we learned this week? Learn that the cops improvise in very, very uh, unfortunate ways. That I just like, oh, I'm commandeering this forklift. You know that guy was going to be eating out. I commandeered a fucking forklift. All these motherfuckers in their careers, I come, I, they want to commandeer some shit. That ain't a yeah. real thing. That is not a real thing. That's just in the movie. You can't commandeer no shit. Um, we have learned that maybe you should check with yourself once in a while and ask, am I, in fact, the lowest common denominator? That's am I the goddamn worst? Yeah. Fucking banned from spirit. It's a little question you got to ask yourself at least once a day. You just got to check in with yourself. Am I being the goddamn worst? We've learned that um, if you're in your underwear with with a uh, ankle bracelet, it's not it's not a good time to take up yachting. That's that's uh, maybe wait until after probation's over. You're off. 
we've learned if you're going to be smuggling like almost half a ton of drugs, put it in something nobody cares about. Now, don't put it in Optimus Prime. People are going to be on the on the fucking boat taking pictures with the goddamn thing. And you're going to fuck up his transmission. <laughs> Bumblebee. Someone's crammed half a ton of meth up my tailpipe. <laughs> Airhand Pleasant for Transformers. Um, we've learned that you can't just paint a dog black and white and call it a panda. <laughs> I mean, apparently you can, but, but you should not. This is one of those, it seemed like a good idea. This is like a sitcom premise, right? <laughs> Your scientists were so busy figuring out if they could, they never stopped to think about if they should. Okay. <laughs> And finally, we've learned of all the, the implements of, of, of destruction and death. Um, tractors are not the most targeted. No. Like, we shouldn't be trying no, to help. not finesse. We're, we shouldn't be trying to help you kill people, but you ha you're a groundskeeper. You have access to things that are not a tractor. And also, just let's let have let four year olds have tractors. Yeah. It's all fucking downhill after yeah. you're potty trained, okay? Yeah. It doesn't get better. So let them have their tractors. I mean, when all you have is a tractor, every problem. I had something there and it got away from me. <laughs> Thought I had something there. I didn't have something there. It's nice to know after all these years, I can still be bad at my job. All right. Thank you, Tara. Get yourself a good night. Good night, everybody. Oh, but we are...